Hello, welcome to Brimwood Farm. Um, so today we're going to talk about one of those things that is hotly debated when it comes to keeping chickens. All the rules and regulations. So coming up I've got five rules you might be breaking by keeping chickens in the UK. So first off, I'll say it's November 2017 and of course rules and regulations change so if you're watching this at a later date, things might have been altered. But for now, let's talk about the five things you might be doing wrong by keeping chickens. Now this is based in the UK and if you've landed on this video, you're probably looking at keeping chickens or you already do um, and you probably watch a lot of videos from all around the world and obviously wherever you are in the world differs. So all those American homesteading channels have different rules to those that we have in England. Um, but I'm going to talk about those that we have in Britain um, so that you don't get on the wrong side of the law by accident. So number one burying chickens in your back garden or on your land that is a big no-no so regardless of whether you have a flock for meat and eggs or you just have maybe three bantams that you class as pets in the eyes of the government all poultry are domestic livestock the same as you would call cows sheep and pigs and things like that and that means they are same they are subject to the same disposal methods Legally, you have to find an official incinerating plant or waste disposal plant and take your chicken to them. Now, obviously, that is not always uh, manageable for just, you know, one chicken. And many councils recommend that you double bag a dead chicken and you put it in your rubbish. Not in your green waste or your recycling, but in your main rubbish. Now, I would highly advise if that happens, you phone your council and you just find out what they recommend. Um, and as always, when you are contacting uh, local officials, get an email in writing so you actually have some proof of what they've told you. Now, I'll also mention here that some people think, you know, when their chicken dies, oh, well, we'll take it to the local woods and we feed it to the foxes and things like that. Again, huge no-no, and you can be really, really fined for that. So if livestock dies on your farm or your property, legally, you need to dispose of it in the right way. Number two. Feeding your chickens kitchen scraps is a big no-no. Now you might think that's utterly ridiculous, but it's all to do with uh, potential contamination. And we've all heard of the stories of mad cow disease, um, BSC, and that was because um, meat products got into the food chain and contaminated it. And it's the same thing with chickens. Basically, the government don't want you cooking meat in your kitchen, getting potential contaminants onto kitchen scraps that then go into your chickens, they eat it, and then they become contaminated. Now, the only people that are exempt from this are vegan households, but you have to be completely vegan. The entire household has to have no meat in it at all. So feeding kitchen scraps to your chickens is a huge no-no. Now, of course, there are a few ways around this, especially if you're a homesteader and you're growing stuff on your homestead, because all you do, for example, is you go down and you pick your cabbage and you take off the outer leaves before you take it into the house and then you feed your chickens those um, cabbage leaves. And the same could be said for peelings. You could uh, pick your carrots, you could peel them outside before they've even gone anywhere near your kitchen and then technically those aren't kitchen scraps. But you can decide what's best for you and what you want to do. But again, ki feeding kitchen scraps to your chickens is completely legal um, and you can actually be heavily fined for doing so. Number three, letting your chickens into your compost heap. Now this follows on from the regulations about contamination of kitchen scraps and you cannot let your chickens into your compost heap if there are kitchen scraps in it. So obviously uh, chickens can be a really really good way of turning over compost, getting things broken down and if you watch any of the American homesteading channels they always let their chickens straight into their heaps and that's a great thing. But in the UK, if you've got any kitchen scraps or household waste in that compost, they cannot go in. Now you could have a couple of heaps and you could have one heap where you should keep your kitchen scraps in and one heap where you only have uh, garden waste. So clippings, um, leaves, flowers and that sort of thing. And in that case, you might want to let your chickens in. But as soon as the potential for them to come into contact with household or kitchen scraps arises, it's a big, big no-no. Number four, 
feeding your chickens mealworms. So these are live mealworms, but you might be astonished to discover that it is actually against the rules to feed your chickens dried mealworms. Dried mealworms, that's right. You cannot feed your chickens, or any of your poultry for that matter, dried mealworms. Now, why is that? That is because most of the dried mealworms for sale in the UK come from China. And China does not have the same regulations when it comes to sanitation. So it means that you've got no idea what these mealworms have been growing in. They might have been growing in poop, or fungi, or mould, you have no idea. And again, the government do not want you feeding those mil dried mealworms, in that case, to your chickens, and possibly contaminated them with things that aren't very nice. Now, it does seem a little bit daft that you can't feed your chickens dried mealworms, but you can feed, uh, you can feed wild birds dried mealworms, because obviously, unless you're keeping your chickens in a closed battery shed system, which again is not a nice thing, uh, you're, they're going to come into contact with wild birds at some point. So it's not a fail safe method, but to say on the right side of the law, you cannot feed your chickens dried mealworms. Now I'm going to investigate whether you can feed them live mealworms, because obviously it's quite easy to set up a little breeding setup at home to, uh, to breed these little mealworms. But for now, don't feed your chickens any mealworms. And finally, number five, keeping 50 or more birds. So if this is the case, you have to register with DEFRA. Now this is no bad thing. It's free and it's easy to do. And they're not trying to get at you or regulate you. They just want to be able to disseminate information to you if an outbreak of something happens. Now in the past, a lot of homesteaders and smallholders got around it because the wording on the website said 50 or more hens. So of course, to everybody, their roosters didn't count, their chicks didn't count, their growers didn't count, their pullets didn't count, and it was only their laying hens that they would include in that 50. But uh, just before the outbreak of avian flu last uh, year, or maybe when it actually happened, they changed the wording and now it is poultry. So that actually includes not only your chickens, but it includes your quail, your ducks, your geese as well. Uh, so as soon as you hit 50 or more, it is imperative that you let DEFRA know and register your flock. Um, and that's something I'm going to have to do as well because I am perilously close. I'm about 45, 46 birds. And then coming on next year, I'm going to have tons of chicks. So I'm going to go over that limit. Um, once you register, it's very easy. And you also need to give them updates throughout the year with your fluctuations, especially if you're breeding and you've got a lot more. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you've got 50 or more birds, you must register them with DEFRA. So there you have it. There are my five mistakes you might be making by keeping chickens in the UK. If you know of any more, you want to ask any questions, please just ask in the comments and we can discuss this topic because, you know, it is the rules in the UK and I know that things are different around the rest of the world. And I know that some people in the UK also hate certain things of these rules, but they are there for a reason and it is really best to um, pay attention to them because um, they can actually uh, fine you a thousand pounds per bird which, you know, £3,000 if you've got a small flock is a lot of money. But imagine you have 45 birds and you get fined. So it's well worthwhile sticking by the rules. If you've liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, if you are on Facebook, please come across and join the Brimwoods Farm community group where there's loads going on and we talk all week. Um, but I will see you again very soon. Bye.